Hello there, I'm Alex from the Skills Team. This video is an extract from my introduction to the Key Skills at Studying at University workshop, delivered live to an audience of students on the 22nd of September 2020. In this extract, I explain ways that you can start to develop an understanding of your assignment question to ensure that your answer is relevant. If you would like to attend one of our workshops live, then go to our Enhance Your Learning Workshops calendar, linked in the description of this video, and register for an event. In my first year, I had an assessment. I actually got capped of a grade of 55 because I was told that although my essay was well written, it was well researched, I was told that it didn't actually answer the question. And that is why understanding the question is one of the key skills of being at university. Because no matter how good you are at writing, if you don't give the marker what they want, then you won't get the grades. In my opinion, I was lucky because if I, I did that in my first year, but if I'd done that in my later years, it would have cost me a lot more. So it's really crucial that you get in your head quite early on the ways and practice that you can do to avoid not answering the question within your essay. And so you've actually covered each aspect of the essay question, that your answer actually hits all the marking criteria and you're not actually leaving it to chance that you hit them or not. And you can actually write your answer to the marking criteria and you can ensure that all your essay actually answers the question as well as hitting the submission requirements. So how do you actually understand the question? Well, the question is broken down into two components. It is broken down into, first of all, instruction words, and then secondly, subject words. And I'll be showing you an example question on the screen. So instruction words are common and instruction words effectively tell you what you need to do. So these can sometimes be difficult to understand, but what I'm going to recommend is just defining each of them that comes up in the question. So they can include critically analyze, they can include assess, consider, clarify, and so on. So the actual things that they could include are the words that tell you what you need to do. For example, compare tells you need to look at sources and consider the, consider one source versus another. Um, define means you need to actually come up with a definition of something or actually explain what it is. Evaluate means you need to ask questions about it and reach a conclusion, and so on. But what I would always recommend doing is don't just assume you know what these mean. I would recommend Googling them. Define the key instruction words to work out what you need to do, and I would almost rewrite the question with the definition in mind. So that would then help you to understand what you actually need to do. And again, when you're checking the answer, when you're proofreading, you can check that you've done this. The second thing that an essay question is made up of is something called a subject word. A subject word is specific to the subject area that you're in, and it will tell you what areas you need to cover within your answer. So these will be helpful in establishing what areas you need to cover, so what topics you need to cover, and what you need to research. Again, I would recommend writing a mind map around these. I would recommend trying to define what exactly the subject keywords mean and what areas you can explore. And that will take you on to when you do your research and then you can further develop that whilst researching. Uh, again, we cover this in more depth inside a podcast, so I'll skip on to the next slide. If you want to hear more depth about that, you can watch the podcast about it. It's, called, it's part of the assignment journey, understanding the question. So here's an example essay question. It's just written on something that I've made up from law. And this essential this essay question says critically analyze the impact of the consumer protection act 1987 on the increasing standards of work within the uk building sector between the years 1987 to 2000 so by just reading the question we can work out what the two types of things are first of all you can see your key essay terms so you can see critically analyze that tells you that you will need to use critical analysis, you need to ask questions and come to conclusions about a source. The subject words here are the Consumer Protection Act 1987. You'll need to work out what that is, what that means, which, which parts of that impact on the increasing standards of work. And the other parts are increasing standards of work, the banking sector, and the years 1987-2000. So that tells you the scope of the question and what you'll need to research. And you can make a mind map around that to what, as to what you need to do. There's a similar oh, example where I break it down something like that. One second. Yes, Tim. You said the banking sector, didn't you? 
Building, sorry, building, my bad. Ah, yes, you didn't read the question right. <laughs> no, I didn't. And if I answered with the banking sector in the in the thing, I would have got no marks. Absolutely, yes. Sorry, just for it out. Um, I'm, something I'm, that I would recommend doing is actually reading that question a number of times. And I'm not saying that because I made the mistake. Then I'm saying that because I said it in my podcast. And it's because it's really important. Read it slowly. Take your time and read it a few times, underlining it, highlighting it to really make sure you get what it's saying, because you can just skim read it and read the wrong terms, just like I just did. So as well as the essay question itself that you've been given, often there is accompanying information. On my course, we had an assessment brief, but it might be called something different on different courses, but we were always given an assessment brief. And that would contain information about the submission requirements, the date of the, the date that it was due in for, how many words it needs to be in, and also what the learning outcomes of the assessment were. So that assessment brief gives you additional information and you can actually turn that additional information and the question into a marking criteria. So when you get an assessment, don't just look at the question, look at the additional information you've been given and turn those into questions to make sure that you've done them. So for example, the, the question here said critically analyze. I would say, where have I shown critical analysis? And I'll make sure that I've done that. And I'll go down the assignment brief and anything it tells me to do, anything it says it expects me to do, I will make sure I put that as a question and check that when I'm proofreading it. So always make sure you have a look at the learning outcomes in the assessment brief. Otherwise, you might end up answering a question which is not the question that they wanted. And it's really important at university to make sure that you are answering the, the right thing because it makes your life easier and it also means that you get good marks. But if you do look at the assessment brief and you look at the criteria for the higher grades, if they if you are given a mark scheme for what they expect for each different grade, I would always recommend trying to go for the higher grade if possible, because that way you can only get lower than it or it if you do everything that as well as you hope you do. So look at the assessment brief, look at the information you've been given and always try and aim for the top criteria to try and get it if possible. Thank you for watching this extract from our workshop. I hope that you found it useful. If you are interested in learning further about this topic, I've added some useful links into the description of this video. There is also a link to our calendar of upcoming workshops in the description. If you want to see our workshops live, then you can use this calendar to find and register for events that you're interested in. Thank you again for watching.